Hi everyone and welcome to today's writing lesson. Now before we move on to having a look at what we're actually going to be doing, um, I need to say some massive well dones and shout out to some people um, for some writing right at the end of last week um, that I didn't have a chance to put on to yesterday's lesson, I'm really sorry. Um, so I need to do some shout outs for two people. So let's go and have a look at their work because it is amazing. So we have move myself out of the way. Um, Esme, um, Esme, sorry, in 6P, created the villain Cressida Venom. Now, I just love that name for a start. And she wrote a brilliant biography for her, as well as lots of other information for a fact file. And it was just absolutely brilliant to see the detail that she put in, okay? Um, the description, um, just, it was amazing. So well done, Esme. Um, it was really nice to read this. And it's a joy to be able to share it to everybody else. So well done. I'm going to give you um, five dojo points. And the next person who not only sent in some information about their villain, they also sent in a picture of them as well. So we have Isabel in 6R with Lord Loki Koki. Now, again, what a cracking name. Uh, I remember reading this earlier in um, last week. And it's been great to actually find out more about this villain. Um, it's talking about them having a lonely childhood and some really good information. And it seems like um, Isabel really has an, a good, clear idea of who this villain is and how they came to be. So again, I'm going to give you five dojo points. So both of you, absolutely amazing work. Well done today. So did anyone find out what this one was? No, it took me a while, but I did work it out and quite a few of you actually sent in the answer. So well done to you. It was a hole. So you can't see the hole. It doesn't weigh anything, but when you put it into the barrel, it makes it lighter because everything comes out. Uh, oh, it takes a bit away from it, doesn't it as well? Really clever, that one. Well done, Agent P. Stumped us. So this was also the riddle from yesterday for your task. Now again, this is quite tricky. It was another animal, so lots of you were working out of that. And quite a few of you did send in um, the correct answer. Uh, a couple of strange guesses, but um, yeah, the correct answer was a hummingbird. Okay, so we go back. It is small, it's larger than the bee. They are quite, they are really small birds. Um, they hum, it's in the name hummingbird not covered in buzz, fuzz, not covered in fuzz, they're covered in feathers. Small collector of a juicy flower nectar. They go around collecting nectar from um, flowers. Okay, so that was a tricky one. Interesting though. Now, he sent me another one, all right? Uh, it's starting to bug me now, but they're really, really tricky to work out. So can you please help me again today? <laughs> I don't know what this one is. I'll read it to you. I, I scratch my head. I cannot work it out. It says, you throw away the outside and cook the inside. Then you eat the outside and throw away the inside. What did you eat? I mean, Agent P. It's... No idea. Please help me, guys. If you've got any idea send it into the email address, have a guess, and I will try and work it out. I might even have to ask him, because this is really hard. I think he likes his riddles. Okay, so we need to send him a really tricky one back, because these are getting harder and harder. So what we're going to do today is we're going to collect some vocabulary and some language to really make an interesting riddle, or conundrum, enigma, whatever you want to call it, but it's a riddle. Um, so we're going to just find out some more vocabulary to really help us build a great riddle. Key vocabulary for today. Uh, question, we're going to have to ask a question at the end. Punctuation, we need a question mark, might need exclamation mark, commas, full stops. Uh, adjective, verb and adverb. I wonder if you can remember exactly which ones they are in a sentence. We might check that in a second. Uh, some of you still get those mixed up. Figurative language, we talked about that yesterday. So simile, onomatopoeia, alliteration, personification, metaphor, 
So if you're not sure about those, go back to yesterday, have a quick look at those, or if you're in school, you might have written it on the working wall. They're really useful, all right? Let's go and check what an adjective, a verb, and an adverb is. Now, you could pause the video now and see if you can find um, these things. So in the first one, find the adjective. In the second one, find the verb. In the third one, find the adverb. And in the last one, find the adjective, verbs, or adverb. Are they in there? Are they all in there? Is some or more than one? So pause the video and have a little go at that, please. All right. Our first one, if I get my highlighter, get the right colour. Uh, first one said, we're looking for an adjective. So an adjective is a describing word. Generally describes a noun. So Alex spotted, so that's him doing something, a beautiful bird. Bird's a noun. Tree is a noun. Beautiful. So beautiful is describing the noun. So that's our adjective. All right. Second one said find the verb. Let me just get my different colour. A verb is a doing word, something that can be done or has been done. So, in the distance, that's more of an opener, like an adverbial. No. Alex is a noun. Alex could just hear the sound of a quad. Sound is, is, is a thing. A quad is a thing. What's he doing? What's actually doing? Alex could just hear. So he's listening. Okay, so here is our verb. All right. He's listening to the sound of the quad. Next one says find the adverb. Now, an adverb, you should know, um, says how a verb is done. Okay, so um, if it was the first one, the previous one, it could be Alex could just faintly hear. Okay, so saying how that verb happens. So, Alex moved with care towards the warehouse. So where's the verb? What's he doing? He's moving. So he's moving. How did he move? Now normally an adverb has an L-Y, doesn't it? Quite a lot of the time. I can't see an L-Y in here. Right, so Alex moved with care. So is that how he moved? Yeah, he moved. So that's got to be my adverb. It's kind of two words together, but it's still an, it's an adverb. We could use that. If you imagine... If I took that out and I put slowly, it would work, wouldn't it? Alex moved slowly towards the warehouse. So that can be used as an adverb. So not all adverbs have L-Y. And it can be like a little phrase as well. So just be careful with adverbs. Some people get stuck in the idea that they end, they all end in L-Y. They don't. Okay. All right, and the last one said find adjectives, verbs, or adverbs. Right, well, straight away... Um, I can see an adverb, but it does end in L-Y. So carefully, any more adverbs while we're on our adverbs? Uh, Alex tiptoed his way. So tiptoed, that's what he was doing, wasn't it? So I might need to go find my verb colour. So that's him, he tiptoed. Because you could change that for walked or ran. Um, behind preposition... Ooh, mysterious. Could that be an adjective? Is it next to a noun? Mysterious building. So I would say, yep, yeah, that is an adjective. Okay. And hid himself. Hmm, hid. Is hid. Is that? Yeah, hid is a verb, isn't it? That he's doing that. He's actually. He's. You can imagine this sentence happening. He's tiptoed his way along. He's gone behind the mysterious building, and hid. So that is another verb. All right, uh, so we've got carefully, tiptoed, mysterious, and hid. So quite a lot going on in there, but just need to remember what each of those means and how you use them, because we're going to need some of these when we're writing riddles in a bit. Right, so like we said, I think we should send Agent P a riddle. Now, I think a Stormbreaker one would be great, because we've done lots of work with Stormbreaker over the last term and a bit now, or half term and a bit. Um, I wonder what could we use from the story as a subject for our riddle. Now, I've got a couple of ideas on the page here. I'm sure you guys have got loads of other ideas from things that we've seen so far, but these are just a couple that crop to mind. Uh, so we've got the Man of War, the Portuguese jellyfish, the Car Crusher, 
that were at, at the scrapyard. The submarine or quad, okay? Um, four very different things, and they might be very interesting to write a riddle about, all right? Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how you might do this with one of these, and you might be able to have a go then. So what I did is I thought about all the things up to do with the, one of these um, items. So I've chosen quad. Um, I've thought about all the vocabulary that I can collect and all the figurative language, everything and anything I can imagine. Um, and I've written it all down basically. So for a quad, I thought about all the adjectives that I could think of and some just some, some describing words. How many, it's got four wheels, okay? How many wheels did it have four? It's loud, it's noisy, it's dirty. It's probably loads more of that actually. Um, and then I thought about verbs. So what does a quad do? So it revs, so revving, it bounces, bouncing, uh, it drives, so driving, speeding. And I put them in ING because it's much easier to then um, rhyme them as well, actually. Um, and you generally think of verbs being ING words. I also thought of some adverbs. So how are these verbs going to happen? Is he going to be bouncing quickly? He could be driving noisily. He could be speeding hurriedly. It's just like, got to get going. All right, and then... After I've done that kind of description, the adverbs, verbs, and adjectives, it kind of started to give me an idea of what the quad was doing. So the noises it was making, um, how it was moving, what it looked like, that then helped me to think of some figurative language. Now we've done a bit of figurative language yesterday. Just remember um, what each one is. If you're not sure, go back and have a look. Um, but I've just picked out a couple so I did a personification. So that means I gave the quad the features of a human or, an, or another animal. It gave it the features of something else. So like it's come alive. Um, so it lets out a roar. Well, a quad doesn't actually roar, does it? It's not going rah. But by doing that, it, you've got this image of a lion in your mind, which is also fierce and vicious and loud. I created a simile. As loud as a jet engine. So I'm comparing it to a jet engine. I'm not saying it is, so I'm comparing it by using as. I could have said like a jet engine. It moves like a jet engine. It was speeding like a jet engine. Um, and the last one, I've put I am a speeding bullet. And I've written I am because a lot of the riddles are kind of written as if you are the thing, aren't they? Um, so I wrote it in that way as well, just to kind of give me a different idea. Um, so I am a speeding bullet. Well, it's not, it's a quad. But by saying it's a speeding bullet, you are letting the reader really think about how fast this thing is moving. It's, it's not your average slow moving item. It must be something that can move really quick. Okay, so by just collecting all these ideas, now there's no bad idea at this point. It's kind of like a plan in a way. This helps you to really build an image in your mind of all the things that can describe your item. So I, like I said, a quad. And then you can kind of pick and choose the things that are going to be really useful to then describe it in a riddle. We don't want to give away too much, but we want to give away just enough so they're starting to kind of think they've got it or they think it's something else. So you kind of don't want it to be too easy. You don't want to be too hard. You want somewhere in the middle. So we need plenty of description. Right, so for an hour turn, I would like you guys to pause the video and see if you can do a similar thing to me uh, but about the car crusher. You can do this on your own, you can do it in pairs, you can do it with an adult, uh, completely up to you. Write it down, because it will be really useful, because you could well then use this one as yours later, uh, or you can choose to use a different one. Um, so please write it down and have a go with it. All right, Write as much as you can, any idea, no idea is a bad idea, as long as it's to do with the car crusher. Um, and I've also added in here rhyming, because uh, it's useful to try and have some rhyming words. A lot of time your verbs will rhyme if they're ing words um but then if you want to try and do other words that might rhyme if you remember back to the snake one yesterday it had some adjectives that rhyme that rhymed it had round found um sound like other words okay that rhymed so pause the video go and have a go cracking right um obviously you've got loads of things written down which is great. I'm going to just show you some of the ideas that I thought you might have come up with. 
and you can compare, you can magpie some of the ones that I've got, all right? So for adjectives, I thought of things like huge, colossal, scary, hungry, metallic. Um, thesaurus uh, was great for this. So if you've not found enough, you might want to pause again now, get a thesaurus and find some synonyms for your adjectives. So if you start with the word huge or big, you might find loads of other words. All right, same with the verbs as well, actually. Um, things like crushing, crunching, demolishing, all similar types of words. So again, get a thesaurus, look up the word crush or crunch and see if you can find other ones. Um, once you've done verbs, it's quite easy then to do adverbs because they kind of descri describe how these happen. So crushing loudly, crunching grimly. Okay, There's that image of like something bad is going to happen. I thought about rhyming. Um, kind of come up, trying to cut some words. Sometimes a half rhyme would work. It doesn't have to completely rhyme. So destroyer and crusher, they're pretty much a rhyming coupler because they've got the er on the end. They don't quite sound perfect, but they would work. So you could say that I am a I am a car destroyer. I am a I don't know. Lots of ideas, but having the rhyming really makes it flow nicely as well. And then you might have come up with some figurative language. You could have had onomatopoeia, alliteration, car crushing, crunching. It's all, isn't it? Um, but I came up with, again, a simile. I can crush you like a paper cup. Uh, I am always hungry. Well, it's not actually hungry, is it? But you could always say, I'm always hungry for metal. I'm always hungry for cars. I'm always hungry for destruction. Um, and then a metaphor I came up with, I am a vicious hippo. Um, I was trying to think of animals that had a really strong jaw. And a hippo have an amazingly strong jaw. So I kind of cut with that idea. I said it was a hippo. And it might throw people off a little bit as well. I might think it's an animal. All right, so you might want to pause again, steal some ideas, or go off and get a thesaurus and uh, kind of add to your um, ideas and up-level them and add a little bit extra to it just to really give yourself some rich vocabulary that you might well use for a different one or for this one. All right, so your task today is to collect vocabulary and language. And now to do that, you're gonna to need to do some of these chilies. So chili one says list adjectives, verbs and adverbs about your chosen item. So just those three things, all right? And I'll show you a kind of way you can do that on the next slide. Chili 2 says do Chili 1, so get those adjectives, verbs and adverbs, and then also see if you can create some figurative language as well. So a, get a simile or a metaphor. Alliteration is quite easy to do in a way, it's just those sounds. And then Chili 3, you've got to do Chili 1 and 2, really. So adverbs, verbs, adjectives, figurative language, and then see if you can get some rhyming pairs, so get your end of your lines rhyming. That's a little bit more difficult to do, um, because you've got to think about the layout of your sentences um, to make them rhyme. So you might want to start playing around with how your sentences might go together. Um, but we're not writing a riddle today. I just want you to really think about getting as much vocabulary and as many ideas as you can ready for tomorrow. All right. So uh, you might want to pause and use this as a kind of idea. You can do your own one. You just make a, make a list. You might want to make a word map. You might want to type it up. Uh, up to you. But I just put this out so you can see a kind of idea for it. So you could maybe draw a picture of your thing in the middle. Um, if you want to do the car crusher, you can. Uh, if you want to do the quad, you can. Um, submarine, Man of War. There are lots of things in the book, aren't there? They're really interesting. Choose one thing that you want to do. Uh, and then your chilies are around. So chili one, adjectives, verbs, adverbs. Chili two, figurative language. And chili three, see if you can get some rhyming words as well. If you think of anything else, write it down. If you've got any other ideas, great, write them all down. Um, and then send it in to the year six email address, please. I'd love to see your kind of ideas and what you're thinking of ready for your riddle. Because um, tomorrow, I'm hoping some of you will help me solve Agent P's riddle because it's got me stumped completely and we will write some riddles for him to work out all right he needs to have something sent to him and worked out because the two he sent sent me are just so tricky so good luck with this i'd love to see your vocabulary please send it in i can give out heaps more dojos 
like we've been doing uh, by email and shag tags. So I will see you tomorrow, guys. Bye.